Hey, this is Joseph Worthy, Activist Supply. I'm going to show a quick workaround for um, multi channel PSDs um, to change them to CMYK mode from multi channel and without messing up the information in them for opening in Illustrator. Now, there was a time period where you had to use the um, proxy setting, and I've demonstrated that before, but I took the video down because I've since learned that some of the updates to Illustrator have reinstated the way that they're handling the EPS document. If you're in CMYK mode and you place that file, you will be able to view those channels, or you should be able to. Some people can, some people can't. I do not understand that. Maybe they haven't updated their computer. I, somebody was having a problem with it yesterday. So I showed them the proxy workaround and the 2017 workaround. Well, they asked me to see the PSD workaround. And so I'm going to demonstrate that now. So I have this multi-channel EPS, um, just like what um, Separation Studio would save. Uh, just I didn't have one that was saved from Separation Studio on this computer, but I do have a multi-channel DCS2 um, just spot plates save that I separated in Photoshop is no different than exactly what you would get if it was from Separation Studio. Um, I don't even have Separation Studio on this particular computer here, but um, I'm going to show you how that you can transform that into a CMYK document without destroying your color separations and then open that in 2017 Illustrator with all the spot information um, intact. So let's uh, open the EPS file. Here's the EPS file here. Let's open that in Photoshop. All right, so we have it open for Photoshop. I like to command zero. As you can see, it's just the spot channels. And if I go up here and go to mode, you can see that it's a multi-channel document. So here's a workaround that I discovered a long time ago, and it wasn't just for that particular um, application of using it in 2018 Illustrator. That was it is something I used as a workaround for that. But this is a way to convert this back to a CMYK with um, without changing the information. First, let me show you what happens if you uh, just change the CMYK. It takes all that information that it has and it just transfers it into CMYK and it leaves some leftover plates so that you don't want that so let's command Z and back out of that here's the workaround you want a new channel and since there's it's black already I'm going to uh, call this uh, capital B L A C K just the same way that Photoshop would make it and now I'm going to look at this to make sure it's a hundred it is a hundred and I'm gonna say okay I'm going to say OK. Now we want that right up here. Now we're going to do another one. I guess we'll work from the bottom. So we'll do a new channel. And we know that yellow is the next from the bottom. So, And it'll be easier working our colors. So we just make this zero real fast. And then we just make, um, oh, I went all the way up. We just make the yellow 100. Now you do not have to do the colors, but because of what I know about Photoshop and how intelligent it's getting and it's starting to understand what you're doing, we're tricking it, but which is fine. You, it's not going to hurt to trick it into believing it. this is the CMYK channels. What you could do is you could end up making it start to make that guess in the future if you don't put the colors correctly. And so it could just mess the colors up in the future. So just to be sure we get the full trick off, we're going to make the color right for each channel. And then you're going to spell it exactly as they do. Excuse me. You're going to get a capital M and the rest lowercase. And then you're just going to put it, you're going to put them, I keep going too far. You're going to keep putting them exactly where they would go. Um, and then, of course, this one's the last one that we have to do, cyan. And you're just going to zero out the one that has 100, and you're going to give the next one 100. Uh, we're going to go OK twice. You don't have to make them spot or anything. It's just the name. We just did the color just to be safe. So now that we have these 
in in here we can't we're going to go ahead and highlight them just to be safe as well um go back to image go to mode go to cmyk mode it's gonna ask us about that we're gonna say okay and then as you can see it did it and it didn't change the file at all um, it actually makes it look better because it it makes it solid when you take those i don't know if you know, a lot of times I just do it for convenience. After I do a separation like this in Photoshop, I take out the these just because it makes a smaller file and you don't need them anymore. But you can turn them off in the other in the other in Illustrator. And so now that we've done that and we have it created this way, we're going to um, go to File, Save As. I'm going to call this uh, Workaround. I'll just call it work A, and then we're going to no longer a DCS, we're going to make it that Photoshop. So now it's a Photoshop CMYK document, a PSD, and save it to my desktop. I'm going to go down here and um, open up Illustrator. Now I'm going to go to File, Open. I'm going to find that work A, PSD, there it is, and I'm going to open it. So there it is coming into Illustrator. It's a huge file. Okay. It's, it's 13 by 19, the same size I had in there. But so there it is, and there's the spot plates brought in. And so you can do the overprint and you can turn off these because we know there's no information on those channels. And then you can look at your spot plates. And to show you um, kind of about adding vector elements. So I'll grab the, I'm going to go ahead and put it on no um, stroke. And we'll make this this color for the plate there. And then we'll pick this tool here, the rectangle tool. Let's just say we're putting a, um, let's just say I have to do that over again because I made a mistake. Let's just say I, I didn't have the rectangle. Um, that we're putting a logo down here and then we just pick the color up here so let's say that's a logo and we're gonna pick a spot plate we're gonna pick the red and then we're um, it's telling me a warning that it has a lot of uh, data um, and just to get rid of the warning I'm gonna do that it's a warning telling you that you can turn off um, turn on data recovery because you have a lot in or something I don't know it doesn't even matter it's a uh, gonna happen when you have huge files um, so there you see the the file and then we'll just look at it real quick so if you turn the red off that it is that's actually just because I have it selected I'll grab the V and I'll click off and I'll show you so as you can see it is that spot color so you just use these colors and it'll make a solid piece of information on your plate there. So that's how you can open a PSD CMYK if you take it in and make alterations to a separation studio document or if you do a simulated process like I show on my channel, a simulated process separation. Now we're about to really get into that some more to where um, we talk about everything to the point where you really can do it. I've shown how I do it, but I've left out, you know, things. We're going to do dot gain, registration marks. We're going to do analyzing and sharpening the JPEGs and sharpening the bitmaps or whatever type of raster file we have. And we're going to um, get the full simulated process down. And so we might save our documents like that. We might go ahead and get rid of the CMYK channels that are in there after we make our separation and then put blank ones in so that we can bring it in like this and do the same type of workaround. Anyway, that's um, Joseph Worthy, Activist Supply. Thanks for watching.